All right, real quick recap or history of what we're gonna be shooting here is Casey was out a couple weeks ago and was training and we were training chest together. I kind of sucked him into doing some of my bodybuilding stuff, which I know he hated to do. If you turn everything off, we can make you a good fucking bodybuilder. Is you in the right trunk, you're already shaved. <laughs> but during that time, I realized that his, his chest and his shoulders are overpowering, you know, most of his pressing. And the, I think the exact statement I made is, is, you know, his chest is way too big, his shoulders are too big compared to his triceps. Typically a bencher's of his caliber is gonna have a lot bigger triceps than what he has. So that was kind of an indication that there's a weak point going on there. And recently he sent a video to review, which, was one rep less than what he thought he should have been getting with the weight. And when I watched the video, there's something going on with the leg drive that I really can't pin down. So there's, there's a technical issue going on as well, as, as well as the obviously building the triceps up. So for the triceps, the solution was to quit doing all tricep exercises that he was doing. And we gave him some new exercises to start playing around with. He'll decide what's going to work and what's not going to work. You know, it's it's not writing a program and say here do this. It's you know try this and see. He's advanced enough that he's going to know what's working and what's not working. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at the technical aspects. So I brought Matt Smith in to help me a little bit because it's this this is a little tricky when you're dealing with somebody of Casey's strength and caliber. And also, we I have a very strong feeling based upon what I've seen before. He's relying a lot on his pecs and his shoulders to do the pressing. So we want to try to change the technique a little bit to get more of it on the triceps, which is probably going to wear out sooner because of that, but it's going to build his triceps up, which in the long run is going to help his bench become bigger, but it's also going to alleviate any pec strains that he's had before in the past. He hasn't had huge issues with it, but it has been reoccurring and nothing major to this point. So we did have him start and he's gonna do a couple more sets of the reverse grip dumbbell presses, which I already spoke about. And then we'll get him onto the bench and just kind of go from there. Instead of trying to like turn your heels out, just try to push your, just, just push through your toes. Like Halbert, you know, just, straight through the toes the whole time. So you're trying to push your body back yep. and start it now and don't let it go. See, we got that. The, the, the last two got better. It was that, that first one, that little dip at the bottom, keep your chest up. Well, what, you, what I'm going to have you do next is going to, it's going to change your setup. Unless you feel you need to do something for your pecs or your back or something. Just that one I could feel. That felt good just to push. Yeah. Away. My butt was coming up. So I need to get my... You need to, you need to bring your feet forward. All right. What, what's going on here is see where your knees are at right now. Your hips can only flex as high as your knee is. Right. And right now your knee is higher than the bench. So when you bring your knee down lower than the bench pad, your hip can't flex higher than the bench pad. See? So it's just bring your feet out a little bit. But I, I wanna see what happens once we really get you up on your shoulders and your back. All right. So on this one, get your feet kinda set, just on the ground. Um, slide down uh, to, to there a little bit more. So, a good, a good gauge that I always use is get your entire head off the bench right now, even more. Now reverse grip the bar, pull yourself up into an arch so your head is completely on the bench. Now get your feet where you need them to feel that toe drive. Get All them right. out in front of you a little bit further. All right, see you already lost your back arch. So let's not deal with the head thing again because I'll lift it out. Reverse grip it, pull yourself up, pull your shoulder blades together and down. Really fucking tight. Okay, now get the feet where they are and drive back like you're pushing toward me. 
All right, now don't let that go. It should be uncomfortable as hell. Now as he hands it out, remember, spread yeah. the bar. Okay. Spread the bar and get your sternum up. Better. I'm not getting anything out of flex. I have nowhere to go. Perfect. That's what you want. Yeah, you, you, you are getting. That, and that's probably where he's getting confused. You think that you, when your legs flex, that's when you're getting leg drive. What we want is leg drive. St uh, static, leg drive is the best way I can explain it. See what I'm saying? Because I'm used to. I always like the feeling. Once you're ready to go. I mean, you keep tension the legs, but once you're ready to go, you fire the hips. It should already be tight and already fired, though. All that drive's got to come from you pushing back into the bench. And if All you right, think about it, sense. if you think about it, when when you're getting that leg drive, that means you had to relax at some point, right. and then you have to yeah. come back. Yes. You're taking a chance of getting a heave call on there. Great, great point. Makes sense. And that's the way I always thought of it. I was like, I never wanted to relax. But I did want to have the ability to yeah. fire, but yeah, you're getting into that gray area. Exactly. That can be where some of the pack stuff's coming from. It's a really gray area, especially with a pause. Yeah. God damn, no 275. Plate, 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 plate. You'll get old someday. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're, what you're doing, though, is you're killing your volume. Honest to God, because even if you're doing 275 for a triple, do the math. Like you didn't do 185 for a set, you didn't do the 275 for a set, and if you add in all those extra little warm-up sets, they all add up. You know, it's, it's just the sets under 40% that really don't matter a whole hell of a lot. Anything over that does start to accumulate and add to your volume. And that, that volume is going to play into your strength endurance, which is your lockout. That's what, different but related, that's what Matt had me do the four sets of 25 dumbbell bench, so like 50s. Yeah, but I'd rather be at specific, sure. you know what I'm saying? But it's loaded now, so fuck it. No, keep it on, it's loaded now, fuck it, you can need that choice. But I think you kind of understand what we're doing now, so we're getting rid of that leg flex and just yeah. keeping everything tight, so let's now, see. Can I do that? Can I do that going back to a little bit of the angle? Yeah, yeah. The only thing that's going to be really hard is for you to do sets of five and more like that. Sure. It's just going to be too fucking hard to stay that tight for that long. Um, so your, your, your higher rep sets, you might want to relax the legs say, a little bit. I just say fuck it, just tuck and do something different? No, no, no. For the higher rep sets, I would just put the feet out forward a little bit more, just take some of the leg drive out. Most of, most of the important sets are going to be in the threes anyhow. I think you can probably hold it for five, but. All right. Try to get yourself off the bench. That helps so much to be able to pull yourself up. As far as. Like the reverse chin with because see how you can come back down and your sternum's already higher? Yeah. I'd like to see the sternum even higher. And kind of going back to with what he was saying earlier, you should be flexing as you're lowering the bar. Flex hard and take the, to take the sternum to the bar. You got to reset again because your sternum dropped. So pull yourself off the bench, get that. So, all right, where, do I want to set my feet first or? It doesn't, it's whatever you, whatever falls natural for you. Three, two. Spread the bar, spread the bar. Just to the bar. That's when I start to get into my knees and fucking kill me. All right, let's change your feet. I feel feet. like I'm, I'm slipping. Yeah, okay, we'll change your feet a little bit. Um, move them out a little bit, and let's try to do more of the heel turn. Okay. The pro I, will, I will say, because I benched with my feet out for years, you do need to pay attention to your feet slipping. 
Yeah, no, I, I mean, that's a big fucking thing. You need to stick them on your shoes. I have, I have a bag. I'm just not gonna, I don't want to Yeah, I got that. I, I got that, but. I got yelled at at Rumford. The head judge was like, you can't do that. Well, here, I've seen meets where, the, actually the last one that Todd competed in, they did two flights and they just deadlifted. So there was still baby powder down. Yeah. There was nothing he could do. And, you know, we kept telling him, talk, 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 you know, because you have no other choice at that point. You have to talk. That's why it's not a bad thing to practice tucking sometimes, because you're, you may not be able to plant your feet because the carpet sucks, the platform yeah, it, sucks. The, rum, the, the carpet ended like right here. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, and, and if you're, you're, if you're on, on plywood, plywood, you're screwed. You're screwed. Yeah, you know, you just yeah, you can't dig in. Now, what Desenzio told me that he uses is rock climbing shoes, and that grabs into anything. That's a lot better. Sternum's staying higher. Just, I didn't know he had the knee issues. It's like, fuck. Figure one thing out, fucking something else pops up. Well, with looking at the way he's, he's kind of actually pushing in on the inner side of his knee with, with the toe turned out. Yeah. It's out in front of him, but it's, it, it's twisted in. So I, that was my concern was looking at that heel. It looked like he was putting a lot of pressure on the inner portion of his knee. So when you told him to put it more straight ahead, you know, it, I think that would take less pressure off one side of the knee, kind of put it more evenly on it. But The other thing too is when you're benching, if you're benching alone and shit like that, when you're setting up, make sure this is against the front or the back. Because what's going to happen is when you start reverse gripping shit, this is going to roll around. So the best thing to do is have somebody spotting you. Because yeah, go. yeah, see, I'm pushing it. I'm keeping it here so it does not move. And then I know you're going to come in first, so I'm going to push out here. Then after you're set, then we switch. Big air, sternum high. Spread the bar, chest to the bar. Don't let that sternum drop. Better. Good. You're sinking on the first one, so you don't want to do that. I can feel, yeah, I can feel yeah, that first one, you kind of let it drop a little bit. Tell me where you're feeling the tension, though. Are you feeling it in your chest, your arms, or just your back? Back. Good, okay. Feeling it in your back is not a bad thing. Right. All right, that's that's it's a good thing. I hope you I all lower back or also the upper back. Eh, more lower, but all right, that's not a good thing. All right. Yeah, you want it more in the upper back. Remember, as you the first thing, take the bar out, try to spread for the rear delts. We set it by spreading the rear delts. And then as you lower, actually try to flex the lats to take the bar to it, yeah. and that takes out that little dip at the top. All right, or we need a 10, 10, 10 5. 5. Or a quarter. Yeah, if you're, if, you're too, if you're too flexed at the start, then, then it's hard to, it's too hard for you to go anywhere. So right. if anything, it's like, think about your shirt. There should be wrinkles in your shirt a little bit, and you flex so hard that you stretch them all out because you're taking your your chest to the bar. That's what I'm going to try to get. I'm going to try to be a little bit. I don't want to say looser, but I'm going to try to tighten up with that. So, I think you need to grab the bar harder from the beginning too. So once you dig your grip in, it should be as tight as it can and don't let that tightness go away. So squeeze that fucker hard. There you go.
Second one, you let your, your legs relax just a little bit and it caused you to dip. But as far as the upper back and everything, you kept that tight in your chest up. Start looking at the, um, the, where his elbows are turning out now. Okay. Because a lot of the other stuff were kind of already debugging a little bit. So we can start to see where that's happening. I always try to, so I'm to pull it. Try to put torque in it like that way. Try to bend it. Yeah. Is that putting me in a better position or a worse position? What I'd like to see you do is, because I can I can feel your tightness when you take it out and then it's, I'm holding it there. That's when you really start grabbing the bar and trying to get everything tight. I like to see all that before you even take it out of the rack. So when you're taking it out of the rack, you're kind of doing like a, almost like a pullover to get it out and then everything's tight from there and then go. That's where I think we're missing some of that upper back tightness is because it's not being established when it's in the rack. So we always said, pull the bar out when you bench instead of press out, you kind of press it out. I could, I, I could feel what you're saying. Because I've felt times where it's, it feels good, and then other times it yeah. feels And part of it has to do with like, getting the height right. So you're going to pull it out. So squeeze the bar, sternum high. There you go. Stern them up. Good. Good. How'd that feel? That, from where I was at, that, that looked like your best one so far. Smooth, everything in the right spot, good speed coming up. At that weight, it's hard to tell. He, he, he didn't really start to turn his elbows out on that, not from what I could see. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go 365 on the next one. Let's get her back to 95. Keep the legs tight. All right, there he's still, he hasn't broke four bit. The only thing I didn't like on that one is he, is he got about halfway down. And he, he picked up speed after halfway down. So it's like you were tight, 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 tight. Then you just kind of let it go. Where you can either let it go just from the beginning, you know, it's, just, it's kind of weird. I'm, I fight that battle because I, I like going fast, but yeah, I gotta, I gotta stay tight. Well, the heavier it gets, the slower you're gonna go anyhow, right, so. Right. Pull it out good. Only thing I see is I, I, I see it let it sink too much. I think I want to stay tight so it just kind of hovers. Going, I mean, let's, let's go back to trying to bring yourself to the bar more. To me, when you let it sink, you relax too much. So, you know, if you're tight, you should be able to bring it down and, and just let it hover, touch, press. I feel like that's where, and maybe it's just my head, but I feel like that's where I would lose um, my speed off my chest. I'm not, because I'm not getting the heave. But a couple things, a thing. couple heave. things, you know, a heave means you had to get, get loose. Right. Under heavy weight, you may not necessarily be able to regain your tightness. Second of all, you know, you're taking a chance that, depending on what kind of judge you have, they might call you for heaving. So, you know, you're gonna you're gonna sacrifice one for the other. So, I think you'd be in a better position if you stay tight. You know, if you're if you're tight and you're taking your chest to the bar, like you said, you're you're. It's like doing floor presses, you're shortening that stroke. So it's gonna be, you're gonna gain strength there because of the, the shorter stroke. But yet, the other way, you're, 
you're getting loose and under heavy weight you may not regain it which would further you know when you get loose usually that's when your elbows flare now I can't say that about you because I haven't seen it yet but typically that's what happens when you get loose on the bench or you relax boom you flare out and then you got to you're you're flexing to get it back up underneath of you focus on just getting your fucking chest to the bar coming off your chest you know you're talking about having that heave and all that stuff coming off your chest that should be coming from you should feel like a spring coming down because everything's so tight and then when it hits your chest it's just it's just all coming out from the lats driving it up remember that's where if, I struggle with feeling my lats. if you're doing it right your elbows will feel like they're sitting on your lats right, you're like right. dig I've, I've gotten to like that video I sent you. There, yeah. One of those reps felt like just That's like, what I we're trying to get. I knew it. I was like, that's fucking great. Yeah. I I that's what it. we're trying to get because that gonna, that's going to take that having to flex your legs to make you think that that's what's going to get you kick started. And, and not to mention that it's, it's the it's the it's the energy where you're digging into your lats. That's that's going to get the bar started, not your pecs. And that's where you're taking that twinge out of there. You know, when when a judge when a judge um, it gives you the press command, he's looking for it to be motionless on the chest. If you essentially take it out, you drop it. He's going to wait until the weight settles. If you take it out and you take it out under control and and lower it a little bit slower, they can anticipate when the bar is going to be motionless. So take it out. Dig the elbows into the lats. I think so too. Lower so that they can anticipate. Boom. Because it's not, it's not, uh, you just want to slow it just a little bit so that, because I think you're getting a little bit of momentum because you're dropping it so fast. That's what's getting you a little bit of that sink. If you take it out and, and think about, it's just like. At this point too. It's think about this. Row the bar. Row the bar into you. You know, it, at what speed would you do a, a lat row or a, a seated row yeah. row the bar into your chest and push it off but at the same time if he can keep his chest high and tight not let it sink it's good to drop it fast right you know so, so there's there's there, some there's that here. fine fine line feel like that last one i could feel it felt good from here to here it was the last as soon as it touched it was just comfortable to, to yeah. yeah well let, let's let's get let's get where it touches an inch higher you know, get your chest that inch higher. You know, maybe a little bit more arch, a little bit more air in your chest, not in your belly. I mean, you are a raw bencher, not a sure bencher. So you can put all the air in the belly you want, it doesn't fucking matter, because you're touching here. See? <laughs> oh no. Good. That was good. That was good. That was real good. Did you pull air in your chest? Yes, because I've everything before was here. That could be it. And he was just a little bit slower than the one yeah. before it. And it was it was like it was just enough that it was it slowed it down enough that you didn't feel like you had to dip at the bottom. That could be it. Let's let's re, so. let, let's repeat it. Let's repeat it and see. But that could be it. Because that's for the longest time I would take a breath to try to get it from here because I could feel it all the way down through my leg. Yeah. And I really, I mean, that's... Do you feel like it, you felt it more in your lats there too? Yeah, everything just felt tighter. But then 
taking it great. half a second slow it was, it was hard. Okay. I mean, it's one thing when you're doing your speed sets. You know, you shouldn't be pausing when you're doing your speed right. work. So just think of, you know, try to catch it about an inch off your chest. And, and you're not going to be dipping with that. Right. But when you go to your pause, slow it down just that little bit like you did on that last one so that you're not, you know, getting in that habit of, you know, sinking it to try to get the speed off your chest. I hope the last, the last like couple of years, I, I've always benched more with a pause than without one. Part of it is I, I get too fast and I get out of position, but the other part was probably, you know, the heaving and the... Well, yeah, I mean, you've probably, you're a different bencher than you were a few years ago. I mean, a few years ago, you were kind of still a football bencher, you know? Um, not that bad, but oh, no, still a football sorry. bencher. Um, you know, down, up, down, up, down, up. Um, where I'm wondering now, you know, breathing into your chest with this, if on those other sets that you were saying the first couple reps felt bad, but then the third one felt right, if what happens is you lost your air and then you had to breathe again, but being on the bench, the easiest way for you to pull air is gonna be in your chest, not your stomach. So then you pull into your chest and then your lats flare, your chest flares and it feels better. You know, so we'll see. Sometimes it's something just so fucking stupid like this, you know, but so easily overlooked, like I said at the very beginning, when, you, when you're up, you know, upper echelon, it's a stupid little shit that makes a difference. Watch his ass, too. Tight. Good. I think yeah. that right there's. Yep. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Which what this is going to allow you now is like your lower back gets tight. Now you don't have to. You can wear your belt tighter. I don't even worry about that. All right. Well. It would help your back a little bit. <laughs>